Hi, I'm Jeff. Thanks for stopping by the channel. In this video, I'm going to talk about how to go ahead and remove my center brake light off my 2023 Bronco Raptor and replace it with a uh, tire mounted uh, light that's made by Oracle. The main reason I want to do this is the uh, center brake light on the Bronco with the larger tire just gets up higher into the field of view and it makes the rear view mirror pretty much useless. So it's really hard to see out the back here. And uh, I just want to go ahead and remedy that, uh, open up my view out the back window by removing this and then just rewire it to uh, run Oracle's LED light that they make. It's compatible with the Bronco. I think it's really designed for the Jeep Wrangler. I talked to their, uh, their company and they said they haven't modified the light since it originally came out for the Wrangler, but I don't think it'll be too hard to tweak it to get it onto the back of the uh, Raptor here. Thank you. There's nice weight to it. Feels very solid actually. So first step will of course be removing your tire. We won't get into uh, the step on that, just removing uh, three lug nuts, but uh, I don't think you need to see that in action. Uh, you may have a uh, key for uh, taking care of a, uh, a lock and bolt if you uh, had that option. And uh, nothing special, just use the, uh, the wrench provided by Ford that's in the back of your Bronco. With the spare tire removed, this is what you're looking at here. So we'll start with a uh, size 30 Torx to go ahead and remove these four bolts. Now with that exposed, we have to open up the back of this with uh, the bolts that are here so you can get access to the cable that runs and is run up inside here. So you can disconnect the uh, cable and, and get it free of the uh, actual light back here. For removing these screws, it's a uh, size 20. So a uh, Torx size 20. There's a steel plate in here, so be careful not to let it go and come out and scrape your paint job. And here's the plug where the cable is. You can see it just runs through. And then I put this assembly back together. I'm gonna save it. Uh, I know dealerships, uh, from what I've read about the uh, regulations on center brake light, uh, 
shops and dealerships uh, are not allowed to sell a vehicle uh, without a center light. So I would definitely hang on this for a reinstallation if you try, decided to trade your vehicle to a dealership because it may require it to go back on. So anyway, I would recommend hanging on to this instead of like maybe selling it on eBay uh, in case you ever wanted to trade your vehicle in the future. So the ring, and I've seen this on forums, when you try and push these all the way flat against the face of this, I think it might be different on the regular Bronco, but the Raptor, there's a bit of a, a change in the diameter of the center brake light, or I'm sorry, the center uh, camera, the rear uh, backup camera. There's a change in the circumference of this as it meets the, uh, the back plate. And so this does not want to lay quite, quite flush. Like you could try and screw it on, but I don't think that's the best option. Uh, it looks like it would need maybe an eighth to a quarter inch off of each of these flanges. So that's what I'm going to do is uh, try and trim these back a little bit with like a hacksaw or a blade real quickly, just so I know this will mount flush against this flat surface back here and not be deforming the ring. The ring is very solid. It, it feels like it's, I don't know, it's aluminum or steel. I didn't check it with a magnet, but I mean, it's really solid. Like I can't torque the ring. So it is a solid piece of gear, but uh, it definitely, I think it's the best option to have it install really nicely and lay totally flush against the back of this plate here is to go ahead and trim these up. Before I start doing any cutting, I notice these uh, three pieces of metal here, the brackets that hold it on are actually just held on by a single screw. So I'm gonna take that screw off before I try and cut these. So I just don't wanna have this on the ring while I'm trying to modify it. So I think it'll be a lot easier to clamp this in a vice grip real fast and then I could easily hacksaw it all in a matter of minutes here. So just taking off. I don't think this is too complicated. Now I can clamp this down with vice grips and easily remove a piece of this uh, pretty quickly here where it would have been hard to saw against this uh, the flex that's inside this. And after taking off the three braces or brackets, I went ahead and put a piece of tape on the side that was the front of this, uh, just because it, I don't know if there'll be any difference in the lighting. It looks like the LEDs are more to the front side than the back side. So just to kind of make sure I got it on correctly here, I just went and put a piece of tape on here before I pulled all three of these off. So I'm gonna go back to install them. I don't get kind of confused because it's kind of similar looking on either side. And I opted for just a pair of vice grips to clamp this tightly. So I'm next to cut myself and I can hold it down against a piece of metal or brace and start cutting through it. This is how much I removed, about a quarter of an inch. I uh, trimmed right at the edge of the hole. I didn't want to rule out being able to use this hole as an option for screwing and mounting it. Uh, this is now that I'm cutting it, it is steel. So even with this uh, hole partially cut or intersected, uh, this would certainly hold this thing in place if I, I wanted to use that hole on it. Uh, it's, uh, but it took me maybe a minute and a half or two minutes to uh, hack saw through this. And you take those three little brackets off. Be careful, I, I managed not to lose any of them. There are some little lock washers for each one of the three screws that holds on the three blades of that bracket. So just careful on that. If you popped them off, it'd be easy to lose them. So after doing... Uh, the cuts to the three of these and shorten them up. I wonder if I'm got a little shorter than I wanted, but um, in most cases you can use a second hole, at least on two of them you can use the second hole easily, probably all three of them to uh, mount it. But anyway, making it cut, now all three of these lay perfectly flush with the hub, so I know there won't be any interference with the tire going on over the top of this and it's showing through. So it took two minutes max, for cutting each one of these, so it really wasn't a big deal, even though we, I know we'd rather uh, not have to modify and cut things that we buy, and you're certainly not gonna return this after you uh, cut it up. But anyway, that's my take on it. Next, I just hung it on here and mask and taped it off so it seems to be evenly centered, so I can uh, mark where a couple of these holes are. I'll probably save the third one, you know, drill a couple of these, uh, and then do the last one with it partially installed just to make sure everything's gonna mount up right. But I just try and make sure it was centered uh, I've decided to uh, put the center, the one hub here vertically with the, there's a little joint down here in the lighting. So I, I didn't want that to be kind of off on the side and have it not look balanced. 
So I put the split in the lighting where the power supply comes in down here and I will run the uh, lighting up to the bottom hole underneath here. So it comes up underneath like that and it should be pretty clean. In any case, it's gonna tuck into one of these side holes uh, that's uh, mounted underneath this frame. The drill that seems to be uh, working the best is a 332nd, 332nd bit that I'm uh, using before putting in the uh, self-tapping screw. It's still, uh, I still, I double checked it and pulled this out again. And it's, uh, it seems to like be the perfect uh, fit here. I decided the last one I'm just going to go ahead and drill my own hole into the metal uh, with a bit that's the same size as the original hole here and then use the same uh, 332nd for uh, tapping in. And then the 332nd for the tap. tape I used for marking the front. So there's three wires coming into this. Uh, I'd have to look. Uh, one is black and green. I'm guessing is a ground. And then there's a blue one and then a uh, yellow one with a thin blue stripe. Uh, my guess is one is uh, tied, of course, to the uh, brakes, gets the power supply, and then the other one is with uh, like the courtesy parking lights because I notice the third brake light up here on the vehicle would come on like when you unlock it and stuff. So the only one I'm really worried about is having it attached to the um, the uh, brake light. Next I wanted to uh, get the power on. So if you're working by yourself like I am, uh, simple thing to do here. Uh, <laughs> this is old school. I just stuck a, uh, a broomstick here against the brake pedal just to uh, keep that circuit powered right now. And then I've decided it was easier to go ahead and remove the harness off of uh, the Bronco here. If I ever need to reattach it, it'd be easy to uh, just put the uh, harness back on. This is the, uh, the plug that you saw. I just went ahead and cut it off. Uh, it's gonna be easy to go ahead and just store with the light if I ever wanted to put it back on. I've got plenty of slack here. The cord is really long and it needs to, and I could just splice this back in so I could reuse the plug back in the original light assembly that I'm also saving. But I found the uh, little connectors that are provided by Oracle. They're, they're just not the best way to connect. So I'd rather go ahead and uh, take the two uh, cleaned up ends of the wire and uh, go ahead and splice them into a little uh, butt plug and you know clamp it down. Then use this little uh, basically siphon, how it just taps into the power and kind of pinches a wire. It's not my preferred way to wire. Then when I uh, put the broomstick on the brakes to keep my power live, I, I was pretty sure from checking out other videos, uh, the two I wanted. So I was able to verify the yellow wire is the one that's hot to the brake. And then of course, if I put the, the negative wire here, you can see it works. So but anyway, just kind of verify your wire. But again, on the Bronco Raptor, I don't know what it's like on the regular Bronco, but on the Raptor, there's three wires in here. I'm pretty sure uh, one is uh, tied to the courtesy lights. Uh, when you're normally driving, the light isn't on anyway, so I'm just not really worried about this light flashing when I unlock my vehicle. The other ones still work on it. So the yellow one is the power supply off of the brake, 
and the other one here, the black with a little bit of green going through it is logically the ground, and that's what they both test out to be. I ran, make sure before you splice these together, uh, the factory OEM cable that's going to it comes at it out of the uh, top up here. So I tucked it down to come to the bottom hole so these could meet down here. And then after I get them spliced, I'll go ahead and put it back up through the hole underneath. And then I'll go ahead and uh, zip tie them inside there just so they don't rattle around. And those spliced together. Go ahead and wrap them up. The uh, unused courtesy light here is just uh, disconnected. I'm not uh, gonna let the wire be bare and I'll tuck it in here so it gets uh, taped up with the rest of these wires here. That's it. Now I'll we'll tuck my wire up underneath and uh, beat it up. There's a lot of, a lot of empty volume inside here to uh, cinch up, and they do give you a few zip ties, and I have some of my own just to make sure everything is snug up underneath and doesn't hang down underneath the tire. Now the game is uh, just to look at it installed, revolt the uh, tire on. Pretty bright to the eye, a lot of LEDs. And here's the uh, finished end, end product. I'm really pleased with the result. I wish I didn't have to do the uh, mods to make this uh, fit, uh, such as cutting the metal and the uh, splicing into the harness. They could make it a little more user friendly. And I did call the manufacturer. They said they have not made any changes since they released it for the Jeep. So even though on the website it says that this is made for the Bronco and the Jeep, it was really made for the Jeep but it absolutely works on a Bronco. So uh, a little extra work, I think it's well worth it. The camera doesn't really quite do it justice, but the red is a perfect match to the LED reds on the Raptor. If you don't have a Raptor, I don't think they're LED on all the back lights back there, depending on the model, I'm not sure. But on this, uh, it's a really great match. Uh, equal intensity, I, I just think it's a uh, really well done light. It centers in there and when it's off, you really don't notice it because the uh, edge on is pretty narrow and thin. So again, uh, totally pleased. I would recommend it, but I would certainly recommend the manufacturer, uh, Oracle Lighting, uh, go ahead and make some mods to this. Trim off a quarter inch, it would still work on the Jeep as well as the Bronco, and maybe uh, be a little more flexible on the wiring harness. This is the view without the brake lights uh, turned on right now, just so you can see how clean it is looking. Uh, the courtesy lights are uh, still on. I just closed my uh, car door, uh, but those aren't the brake lights on right now on the left and right. But you can see it uh, really disappears into the wheel. If you're going close, you can see the thin edge of the LED lights, but it's, uh, it's not something you're gonna notice when you're being followed. So I think it's uh, just a really sharp, nice design. And having the tail light out of the center of your back window is fantastic. I've already hopped in and checked it out and I can finally see again looking out my back window. So to me, it's worth it just for doing that.